All right. All right. So we have our proclaimer for the evening is Reverend Wendell Still. Go right ahead, Reverend Wendell Still. Thank you. Good evening to everybody. And it's a privilege to uh, to be speaking to you. <clears throat> uh, today has been quite a day, and uh, I hope that each of you are doing fairly well, and I pray that uh, we get something out of this few words that we have this evening. Uh, we're going to be speaking today from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses Three, I'm sorry, Second Timothy three, verses one to fourteen. Shall we all stand for the reading of the word? This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men will be lovers of their own selves, covetous. Bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive city women laden with sin, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as gaining. And then we withstood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their father shall be manifest unto all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long suffering charity and patience, persecution and affliction which came unto me at Antioch, at the economy and at Lystra, what persecution I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that live godly in Christ, Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast seen, hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned the word of the Lord. This evening, I uh, want to kind of brief you on uh, the chain of events that we've been confronted with confronted with lately and um, it hasn't been too long that we had some rather hectic, what I call tedious weather, very rough. It was not only rough, it was dangerous. We had the loss of lives. Some people froze to death and a lot of producing other explosive laws as a result. We hadn't seen such weather in years, according to the records that they kept. And lives were lost, resulting as well. Mass killings are still a thing of the day. Uh, Many innocent citizens are being killed. We find that our young people are killing each other. We, in other words, we find that it's kind of difficult 
to love one another. Killing of innocent citizens, many of them are children, and the televised murder of an innocent black male by killed by none other than five black policemen. The ongoing war in Ukraine resulting in thousands of innocent citizens, many of them women and children, the continuous plea for more weapons and more advanced weaponry to fight a battle without knowing the outcome. The Supreme Court uh, revoked Roe versus Wade, which banned the uh, availability of abortions. How unfortunate that they didn't think to revoke the bill where they passed where it was illegal to for the children to pray in school. And hopefully they will see the error and, and the sincerity, the necessity now, we need prayer more than ever. The The tip doesn't seem to end there. The massive earthquake with thousands of lives being lost in Turkey and up to 75,000 wounded. And I thought about a couple of nights ago, the president of the United States gave his speech to the nation about the condition of our country as it is right now. And it seems like some of those that were present seem to have disrespect for that procedure as well. I've often thought about much of what is going on now is about to catch up with us. As I said, mass is killing of each other, begging, robbing, and stealing is surveillance. Jobs are still there for the taking. Let's not forget the massive, let's not forget the massive derailment of the train with hundreds of cars and massive explosions as well. Many had, many homes had to be evacuated. And some of it may still be burning as we speak. It's another sad point. Uh, human trafficking, we have been dealing with that as well. It's so many things that are going on now, it's just heartbreaking to keep up with it. Sometimes I find myself getting a little agitated when I Look at some of the news, what's transpiring over the airwaves. But we know that God is in charge and he is able to take care of everything, no matter what it is. But I think that when you look at the war in Ukraine, the thousands that are being killed, many of them are women and children, and it seems that the leader of the country and the leader of Russia, they seem to be playing games with each other, but it doesn't seem to be any sleep loss. It seems like it's just business as usual. But I thought about all these things that we are dealing with now and what would it take to resolve them? And I'm reminded of a passage that I read in Second Chronicles of the Old Testament, which I think would probably solve some of the problems that we have today. It's some similar, striking similarities there. And we turn to Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 12 to 19. Said, and the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, 
I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven, there will be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. But he goes on that said, now mine eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and mine eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. The word of the Lord. Don't become complacent and think that we have been blessed and we think nothing can happen here, but it goes a little bit further. Chapter, verse 17 said, as for thee, thou will walk before me as David thy father walked and do according to all that I have commanded thee and shall observe my statutes and my judgment. Then will I establish the throne of thy kingdom according as I have covenant with David, thy father saying, thou shalt not fail thee, a man to be ruler in Israel. But if you turn away and forsake my statutes and commandments which I have set before you, and shall go and serve other gods and worship them, then will I pluck them up by the roots out of them, my land, which I have given them, and this house which I have sanctified for my name will I cast out of my sight and make it to be a proverb and a byword among all nations. I would like to share with you some words of a song and I think it's appropriate for this time, the season of what we are dealing with now and it's called blowing in the wind. The word goes something like this. How many roads must a man walk down before you call him a man? How many seas must a white dove sail before she sleeps in the sand? How many times must the cannonballs fly before they are forever banned? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. And how many years must a mountain exist before it's washed to the sea? How many years can some people exist before they are allowed to be free? How many times can a man turn his head and pretend that he just doesn't see? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. How many times must a man look up before he sees the sky? How many years must one man have before he can hear people cry? How many deaths will it take till he knows too many people have died? The answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. The answer is blowing in the wind. I pray that In some way, you may have received something from what we have just given you. Sometimes I find it extremely difficult to digest what is going on, especially on the national scene and the local scene, because sometimes it can really take it. But as I said, the last scripture say, if my people who are called by my name will pray, and humble themselves, they will hear from heaven. But it goes a little bit farther than that. It says that God will be listening as well. So it's not a done deal. You must do that. Fasting and praying is one of the most effective tools that we have available to us. 
let us use it diligently. Keep each other in prayer, love one another, he commanded us to do in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will speak to us all this evening. We ask for your guidance and direction. Stand by us through the rest of this week. And we pray for those who are sick and shut in, bereaved families of the household of faith, those in general. We ask for your guidance and direct and shield and protect us from all evil. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Steele. Thank you for that word tonight. Um, 